The one thing that everyone agrees on when it comes to in-ear monitoring, you will never go back. You need to hear it to believe it. For that, let's go somewhere we all know too well, rehearsal. Yeah, we all know this, too many sources, everyone wants more volume, and you have the wedges yelling at you, right? Well, let's switch that to in-ear monitoring. Put on your headphones to get the best impression. This is what we hear in the room. And this is what we hear with in-ears. This is the mix for our singer. About a contest and how you can win it all. And this is the mix for bass, guitar, and drums. Yes, everyone can balance between those two sources, a main mix and the vocals in this case. And until now, we're just using a basic setup with one transmitter and a small mixing desk. Let's see what this setup offers. Our one transmitter can send signals to as many receivers as we want. It's like a radio station, but of course, it has only two inputs. In smaller setups, we could use this for maybe just a voice. Maybe we also have a guitar or a keyboard or whatever we need. In larger setups, like with our band, we need to pre-mix all the inputs and build two feeds. Let's say we put vocals on one input and bass, guitar, keys, and drums on the other. Yes, we can always change that. On your receiver, you can now decide how you want to hear these inputs. You can have them like a panorama, separated left and right. And you can balance the mix to your liking, like this. About a contest and how you can or you can switch to focus mode on. This will mix both inputs. You can now balance what you want more of in the foreground and background like this. Of course, you could use a set just for you and only hear yourself. This is a rather unusual setup because you also isolate yourself and might feel disconnected. And as an instrumentalist, you might miss your sound stage as well. That's why most in-ear mixes rely on a much more complete feed of all sound sources. And yes, more often than not, we have several signals, more sources, a band with three, five, or more members. In this case, we need at least a basic mixer to pre-build best possible in-ear mixes. Luckily, they do not cost a fortune these days, and the setup can preserve your perfect sound for rehearsal and on any live stage later on. Let's have a first look at our demo setup. Our mixer allows us to blend together way more inputs. Let's say we have our vocals and keys. Yes, keys, finally to be heard by everyone. Plus bass, guitar, and drums, maybe with a basic miking setup. Now using the mixer, we can decide what we send to each of the two inputs on our transmitter. For example, we have all the options to build a classic mix that separates vocals and instruments, or a fine-tuned mix that gives the instrumentalists a better distinction on one input while combining keys and vocals on the other input. You can connect as many receivers as you want, and every receiver can balance between those two inputs to their liking. Or you can, and will, add another transmitter, which opens new and even more individual options for everyone in the band. For example, we could use one transmitter for vocals and keys, with bass, guitar and drums on the second input, and the other transmitter can focus more on drums and bass, with all the other sources on the second input. By the way, even with a basic in-ear setup, you can easily add comfy options like a click track. Your choice. Back to rehearsal. So those are several options that will help us reduce stress, get a clearer picture of everyone's performance, and give you some pure joy, because once you hear better, you can perform better. I heard a story last night on the radio. Our next session will cover tech basics, so you're well prepared for both rehearsals and live stages. See you there. But you got